Hello, it's Thursday. Now, I hope this week you're going to forgive me a little bit of sentimentality because we're going to go back in time to the first pattern I ever released on this channel. Now, some of you may remember Spoo Kitty. Not very many of you will, though. I had less than 100 subscribers at the time when I posted her, but as the Halloween season picks up, I've noted more and more comments coming up on this particular video just asking for clarification, needing help with certain bits and pieces of it, and also just sort of pointing out some of the math errors. Basically in the interest of finding out how far I've come and making sure that Spookity can stand the test of time, we are going to be doing a revised version of her this week. So I would like to introduce you to Spookity 2.0. Two kitty? And as part of the revision, she now requires no sewing. But first of all, I made this. How do we feel about this? Do we want this? I've got a couple of posts up around the internet at the moment asking how I fix it because it's just not quite right to me yet, but there's something really cute about it anyway, and I don't want to just completely discard it. So you let me know. How how do I fix this? <laughs> okay, so to make your Spoo Kitty today, you are going to need 8-ply 100% acrylic yarn in three main colours. You're going to need a ghost colour, a cat colour, and a toe bean colour. You are also going to need a pair of 20mm safety eyes. So this is one change that I have had to make between the two versions, just because the original was made with 18mm safety eyes, but I didn't have any. So I've had to update that to be 20mm safety eyes, which means that I'm making the eyes slightly bigger on this new version. You're also going to need a 3.5mm hook, a pair of scissors, pins and needles, but only in a very limited capacity, at least one stitch marker. Please note that a bobby pin is also acceptable use here. Excuse me, one second. I need to start keeping stuff in my desk. And some stuffing. But that's it. Also put some effort into making sure my nails are pleasantly spooky for the month. I'll have to forgive my poor uh, nail art skills, but um, this is for you, everybody. Whee! I do just want to say, uh, in updating this pattern to be no-so, I would say that the difficulty level has potentially been upped a little bit, but so has the consistency, and I've also fixed all the math errors in the, f in the original. Okay, so because our little spookity friend here is no-so, we are going to have to start by making all of the pieces we want to attach as we work up the main body piece. So to start with, we're going to make her eyes. So in the original, we made the white all as one piece and then sew, and then sewed, is sewed a word? Then we sewed these little orange circles in behind. We've got a trick to, to not have to do that this time, you'll be pleased to know, but it means that we have to make the whole eye socket first. So we make those by grabbing our cap colour, and I'm using this orange because I'm going for a more traditional spookity feel on this remake. And we're going to work three rows to get up to 18 single crochet around. So just like that. So next up we have to work our first colour change to change to our white in order to work up the edge where we're going to join into the ghost costume. So for this pattern you're going to want to do all colour changes in the stitch before you want the new colour to be active. So it means that if we're starting row four in our white, that means that I need to change to our white in the last stitch of row three. So I'm going to frog the stitch that I've done, which does happen to be the second stitch of an increase. That's fine. Color changes work the same regardless of if they're single crochet, if they're an increase, a decrease, any of that stuff. So we start by inserting our hook into the stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop, leaving you with two loops of your old color on your hook. I'm then going to hold that color out of the way and grab a strand of the color I'm changing to, which for me is this white. I'm going to pinch that at the base of the stitch, so like so. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull it through both loops on my hook. So you note that the stitch is kind of wobbly and, and not looking great there. And I'm just going to tug on my tails until it settles down into position nicely. So what you'll be left with is a finished single crochet in your old colour and your new colour on your hook ready to go. So in our white, we're going to work of 18 front post single crochet around. So how we do front post single crochet is instead of working through the loops, which is how see so how we do front post single so how we do front post single crochet is <clears throat> so how we do front post single crochet is rather than work through the loops which are at the top of the stitch we work around the stem of the stitch and because it's front post we start by inserting a hook from the front of the piece around the post back to the front of the piece then you just yarn over and pull up a loop the same way you normally would and complete the stitch so there is our first one, and we are going to work 17 more around the edge. So the reason we use front post here is it gives us a really nice definition between the orange of the cat and the white of the costume, making it look like one is under the other. So that's 18 there. We are then going to return to working in our loops and work a final row of 18 single crochet around. So 
just like so, and then finish off. And that's, that's all of your colours. There is your first finished eye socket. Now you could pop your eye in now, but it's going to be a lot easier after you've actually attached the eye into the main piece to know where you want your cat to be looking. And I can't think of a spooky way to do this transition, so let's just say you're going to need two of them. Just like that. So pop those to one side. So next up we're going to be making his front paws, and the front paws are actually pretty much exactly the same as they were on the original Spoo Kitty, just we're using colour changes instead of stitching to make his little toe beans. So this time we're going to start in our pink, and we're going to start with a magic ring of six. So there's the first five stitches, and in the sixth one we're going to change to our cat colour. So we work that colour change exactly the same way as we did previously, and then we tighten off our magic ring. So that should leave you with completely pink magic ring, but with orange ready to start the next row. We're then going to work six increases entirely in our orange. There we are at the end of row two. So you'll note that I haven't trimmed my pink off and that's because we're going to need it in row three. So in row three, we are going to create the individual toe beans. And uh, <laughs> we do that by swapping colors basically every stitch. So the first stitch of this round is a single crochet in our orange changing to our pink. Like so. We then work an increase in our pink. And you'll note that I'm doing invisible increases. But in the second stitch of that increase, I'm going to change back to my orange. So there is our first little toe bean. I'm then going to work one single crochet in my orange, changing back to my pink. An increase in my pink, changing back to my orange in the second stitch. So the second toe bean. Then a single crochet in our orange, changing to our pink. And then our final pink increase, changing back to our orange. In the second stitch. So there are our three toe beans and we are done with our pink for this piece but I am just going to leave it attached for one more round just because I like to make sure things are really locked in. So I'm going to finish this round by working three repeats of a single crochet and an increase to get back to where we started. And from here on out everything on this piece is worked in our orange. So for the next row we're going to be working 18 single crochet around but the trick to emphasizing your toe beans is to always work in the back loop only when you hit a pink stitch because it gives us that little bit more definition on them. So orange stitches you work through both loops, pink stitches you work through the loop on the far side of the piece otherwise known as the back loop. then round back to the start. So I am going to trim off my pink at this point. Sorry, my scissors have become slightly magnetized along the way. I'm not sure when that happened. <laughs> if anyone, if science side of YouTube is here, please explain to me what exactly went wrong or right there. So now we're going to work some decreases to close off the front of the foot and we're going to work them as single crochet three togethers. And we're going to do three of those along the front. So all you do is you pick up the front loop of the next three stitches, yarn over and pull up a loop through all three, and then yarn over and pull through to finish off that stitch. So there is our first one, and I'm going to do two more of those. Now, I am using sort of the invisible decrease method for these. You are more than welcome to use the standard decrease method for these, which is just pulling up a loop through each of the three stitches and then finishing off the stitch. I just find these ones here, I like them better. So there is our three single crochet three togethers, and we are going to work nine single crochet to finish off that row. Just like so. So now on the bottom you should be able to see your main foot pad and three little toe beans and we've got this curled over bit to indicate the front of the foot and you should have 12 single crochet left in your round. And then complete your piece by working three rounds of 12 single crochet and finish off. So there is our little Wellington boot. And I am just going to pop a little bit of stuffing in there to help the foot itself hold its shape. But the top still needs to be able to squish flat because that is how we're going to be joining it into the body later by working through both layers of stitches. You are of course going to need two of those. 
Now, let me just see if I can find what the cat dragged in. Like so. Pop those to one side with your eyes. Now, normally at this point, I would be telling you where to find a written version of today's pattern. But of course, the written version, or at least a version of the written version, has been available for, what, almost two years now? So it kind of puts me in a strange position. But what I've decided to do is update the original listing to include both written versions. So basically, if you've purchased it previously and you still have your Etsy login details, you should just be able to log in and download the new version as well. And anybody who purchases it from today onwards would be, will be able to download the original version or the no-so version. Of course, the new version will be uploaded for my patrons to access as well. So next up, we're going to make the back feet and the first three rows, including all color changes, are identical to the front paws. Just like that. Now, I'll admit that the rest of this piece gets a little bit free form just to help it form the exact right shape to slot into the body. I really, I realistically probably should have made the piece easier to make and then just sewn it on, but I just really wanted to see how far I could push this. So, um, please don't hate me. So we are going to start round four with nine single crochet around, working through both loops on our orange stitches and back loops only on our pink stitches. Just like so. And now to finish our round over the next nine stitches, we're going to work three single crochet, then three increases. So you'll note that you should have kind of a little egg shaped foot happening as opposed to the roundness of your front foot. And then a final three single crochet to get back to our starting point. If you haven't already, you can trim off your pink at this point. Our next row is pretty basic where we're going to work 12 single crochet around. And then three decreases. And once again, you'll note that I'm working invisible decreases for mine. You don't have to do it that way for yours if you're not comfortable with that stitch. And then three single crochet to finish the round. So all pretty basic stuff up until that point. And uh, here's where it gets a little tricky. So we're now going to work a series of short rows to basically just close off the top part of the foot but leave this opening at the back. So to start with, we're going to work 12 single crochet. Now short row just means that we're not working the entire way around. It means we'll work a certain number of stitches and then chain one and turn and then work back the way we came. Like so. I'm then going to chain one and turn. So as I mentioned, we're now going to work back into the stitches we've just done. And along that row, we are going to work four repeats of a single crochet and then a decrease. So eight stitches in total. You're then going to chain one and turn your work again. And we're going to work four decreases back along the same stitches. Chain one and turn. And you're going to work two decreases along that edge. Now, if you flatten your piece out so that the paw print is on the bottom, You'll note that your active loop is some, somewhere in the middle of this top edge. And what you're going to do is work two single crochet to get to the edge of this piece. So they are sort of the rough edges of those short rows you've just done. So one and two. So you can see there that your active loop is now on the edge of the foot. I'm then going to chain one and turn. We're going to start by working a single crochet into the two stitches we've just done. Those are nice and easy to spot. And then a single crochet into each of the decreases from the last row. And then you're going to work two single crochet along the raw edges of the short rows on the other side. So just like that. So that's six single crochet in total. And then we're going to finish off. So what you should be able to see here is you've got this little foot pocket with your paw print on one side an opening on the other 
you should have six stitches along the top along that short row that we did and you should also have six stitches along the bottom of the foot from row five that we never worked into there is your foot and you are of course going to need two of them pop them to one side okay so the final prep piece we need to make before we can get going is the tail starting from the tip of it and working back up towards the base now there is nothing particularly tricky about this tail it is the easiest piece of the whole pattern so you should go ahead and work that up now and then we're just going to finish off and stuff this piece making sure that the last two to three rows are still able to squish flat and with that done we've made all of the pieces we need to before we start the main assembly so before we go any further you should make sure you've made two eye sockets two front feet two back feet and a tail so for now we are just going to pop all of those pieces back to one side but you just need to make sure you've got them before we get started okay so the assembly of our new and improved spooks is very similar to the assembly of our old one basically we start by making two ears join them together into one piece and then work a couple of rounds at which point we start to join our eye sockets in and we do that over the course of several rows before sort of moving down the body shaping in part of the head shaping out the back before finishing in this frill so we're going to start now by making his ears so the original spook kitty did start with a magic ring of three i'm too old for that now i'm gonna do a magic ring of four instead so in your ghost color start by working a magic ring of four In row two, you're going to work two repeats of two single crochet and then an increase. Like so. Then three repeats of a single crochet and then an increase. Then for row four, you're going to work three repeats of a single crochet, an increase, and then a single crochet. which should bring you up to 12 stitches total in your round. And then you're going to work one round of 12 single crochet. Just like that. So for these ears, you are going to make one and finish off. Then you're going to make one and we're going to use it to continue on into making the head and body. So I've got my two there like that. Now, if you need a break, now is probably the last moment to take one before we look, because this is, this is a bit of an endeavor. So the next few rows we use to build out the top of his head, then we'll be attaching his eyes. Now, and I'm actually pretty pleased with how I've managed to join these in. It's probably not a new technique to anybody but me, but I feel really like good for having worked it out myself. Okay, so the first stitch of round six is actually going to be made in your second ear. And what you do is just line the two ears up so that you're working into the first stitch after we finished off and you're going to start by working an increase just like that so all of a sudden your two ears are joined together we are then going to continue by working around the outer edge of this ear and put 10 single crochet in So that's 10. Now each of these ears had 12 stitches around. So we've done an increase in the first one. Then we've done 10 stitches, which should leave you with one stitch of the first ear left. And you're going to put an increase into that. Like so. Then we're going to look at our second ear here. And you're going to find the first free stitch after where we've done our little join across the bridge. And you're going to work an increase into that. I wonder how I explained that in the first video anyway that's that increase so you'll see there that we're now joined in two different places with this little hole in the middle you're then going to work 10 single crochet around your second ear leaving you with one stitch left in your round unworked and you're going to put an increase into that one as well so all in all you've worked 28 stitches 14 around your first ear and 14 around your second ear and they've now been joined together into one major round that we're going to use to build up the top of the head. Okay, in row 28, you're going to put a single crochet into each stitch around for 28 single crochet in total. 
like so. So we've got two pointy little ears. So we have one more row to work before we start attaching our eyes. So enjoy this while it lasts. You're going to work four repeats of an increase and then a single crochet. Then four single crochet. An increase. Two single crochet. An increase. Six single crochet. And then three repeats of an increase and then a single crochet to finish off your row. Like so. Now at this point, you should stop and check that you have 37 stitches in your round. And at this point, I'm also going to recommend that you start using a stitch marker to indicate the first stitch of your round. It's going to help you a lot in keeping count over the next few rows. Now, if you don't have a stitch marker, I personally find a bobby pin can be just as effective or a piece of scrap yarn. It's just a way of marking that stitch so you know that with 100% surety that that is in fact the first stitch you worked in that round. And I'm going to be using this lovely little turquoise paper clippy one today as we move into row nine and start attaching our eyes. So just to help you sort of position, position yourself, to help you acclimatize yourself, to help you localize yourself, just to help you orient yourself. This is going to be the back of the head and this is going to be the front of the head where we attach our eyes. So I'm going to pull my eye sockets in here so we can see them, <laughs> ironically. And we're going to start row nine by working 13 single crochet around. So that's my first stitch and I'm going to mark it with our stitch marker. So that's 13 there. Then over the next four stitches, we are going to attach our eye socket. Now this piece is the same the whole way around, but because I work in a spiral, there will always be this kind of little jagged place where I do my color changes at the end of rows and uh, where I finished off. So I just like to try and place that symmetrically on the piece. So because we're joining over four stitches, I'm going to identify where my finishing off point is. And I'm going to use two stitches on the on one side of it and two stitches on the other. And I'll do the same thing on the other side just to make sure that the two eyes, as you can see here, that's my little finishing off point, but because it's balanced on either side, it looks almost intentional, almost intentional. <laughs> so I'm going to line the right side of my eye up against the right side of the headpiece that I'm making so that the next stitch is that second stitch on one side of the finishing off point. So there you go, right sides together. I'm going to insert my hook through the stitch of the eye and through the next stitch of the head. So that's one. And we're going to work four stitches in total to attach the top of this eye. So the next stitch of the eye and the next stitch of the head. Two. Stitch of the eye and the stitch of the head. Three. The eye and the head. Four. Now what you can do is flip this over and you'll be able to get a feel for how that initial eye join is going to look. But flip it back over for now. We are then going to work five single crochet through just the head piece. And be careful on that first one that you're not working into the same stitch that you've just attached your eye through. You should be able to see where the stitch is sort of pulling on the loops to know which one that is. So one, two, three, four, and five. So that's just through the head. And then in the next four stitches, we're going to be attaching our second eye. Once again, I'm going to use two stitches before that finishing off point and two stitches after that finishing off point. So laying my right sides together so that I work through the eye first. I'm going to work through the next four stitches. Like so. Trust the process. <laughs> and then 11 snitches, snitches, <laughs> and then 11 stitches around to finish off your row. And the last stitch of that should fall in the stitch before our stitch marker, because that's the first stitch of our round. So if you find that yours doesn't, 
like there's not enough room for those 11 stitches at the end, go back and make sure you haven't accidentally missed one as you've been joining your eye sockets on. Particularly some of those increases have made for very tiny stitches in some cases. So now we're going to be moving on to row 10. So once again, we start with 13 single crochet around. So we work our first stitch and then move our stitch marker into it. So there is 13 there. And you'll note that that's brought us right up against where our eye is. We are then going to, this is where we kind of, this might get a little bit tricky for some people. It's a new technique for me as well, which is why I might be a little clumsy with it. Basically fold your eye over so you can, so that you're looking at the right side of it and identify the next stitch that you haven't worked into. What you're going to do is inserting your hook from the right side of the eye, just work a slip stitch into that next white stitch around, just like that. I'm then going to chain eight. Now, if you're quite a tight chainer, you might need to chain a bit more than that. I find eight is enough. We're going to wrap that around the back side of the eye like that. So you'll see we've got our chain there and we've got our eye. You're going to identify the first stitch on this side that hasn't been worked into. And once again, inserting your hook from the front of the eye, the correct side of the eye, you're going to work a slip stitch in there as well. So what that's done is locked down this chain along the back of it that left us on the right side of our work again, ready to go. And you should be looking at the five single crochet we put between our eyes in the last round. And in those, you are going to work a decrease, a single crochet, and then another decrease. So that should get you across that little middle bit between your eyes and brings you to your second eye socket. So once again, identify the first stitch that hasn't been worked into yet. So you'll see you've got this one here that has already been attached. You can see a stitch through the middle of it. So this is the stitch we're looking at. I'm going to insert my hook from the front of that stitch and slip stitch through it. Then chain eight. Like so. Wrap that round the back of the eye and you guessed it. We're going to identify the first stitch that hasn't been worked into. Insert our hook from the front and slip stitch into that one there which leads us to the 11 stitches we did last round to finish off that round. And we are once again going to put 11 single crochet around. Just like that. So once again, your round should finish in the stitch before your stitch marker. And if it doesn't, go back and check your stitch counts. It's easy to lose one as we work these slip stitches into the sides of the eyes. So that brings us to the end of row 10. Now. If you sort of pop your eyes downwards you should be starting to get a feel for what it is exactly that we're doing here but it still looks really really funny you'll note the eyes are still poking out really far to each side and we're basically going to do the same thing in row 11 so we start with 13 single crochet around like so identify your free stitch of the eye slip stitch into it from the front then chain eight, wrap it around the back. Once again, identify the next stitch and slip stitch into it, inserting your hook from the front, which will bring you to these three stitches across the middle of the face, uh, the bridge of the nose as it were, and you're going to work a single crochet three together stitch to decrease them down into one. Then we are back to our eye. Once again, slip stitch into the next available stitch from the front, chain eight, wrap it around the eye and slip stitch from the front into the next available stitch. I'm sorry if this is a bit repetitive. I just am aware that it's a technique that I haven't really used in my patterns before. So maybe I'm just a little bit trying to be a little bit more careful with it than, than I am with some of the stuff that I know that we've all done before. So then that brings us to the end of the round where we're going to work 11 stitches to get back to the start. And while we're working these little slip stitch rows, I recommend counting backwards from your starting stitch. So you already know that this is our first stitch and count backwards until you hit 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And what you'll quickly discover is that this funny looking thing in here is actually the stitch you want to be working into. Those slip stitches make it really, really easy to lose a stitch at this particular point in the project. So that is one of the main reasons we have that stitch marker there, helping us keep track of where everything goes. So there we are at the end of row 11. Now we are going to carry on into row 12. 
So once again, work our 13 single crochet around to where our eye is. Like so, identify the stitch and slip stitch into it from the front, chain eight, round the back, slip stitch again from the front, one single crochet into the middle between the eyes, and then do your regular slip stitch, chain eight, slip stitch for the eye. <laughs> I'm wondering if this pattern has you questioning how bad sewing actually is by now. <laughs> like so. And then once again, we have 11 stitches back round to our start. So that's the end of row 12 and row 13 is exactly the same. Uh, now at this point, if you wanted to get a little bit better of an impression of what this is going to look like, you can take your thumbs and poke your eye sockets in. And if the chains are stopping them, you can just move them slightly up or down to get them out of the way. So that's a better idea of what this is going to look like. And I also want you to note that for each of these eye socket pieces that we've made, you should have six stitches free on them. And how we arrived at that is they are 18 stitches around. We joined originally with four. And then we did four rows where we slip stitched on either side of it using up an additional eight. So we've used 12 stitches of them and there should be six free along the bottom. So row 14, which is the one we're about to do, is the last row where we're going to be attaching these eye sockets. You're probably pretty pleased to know that. So once again, we start with 13 single crochet around. And I would recommend that you continue using your stitch marker. Just, it helps minimize the damage if you do get a count wrong. there is my 13th stitch. So there is my 13th stitch. We are then going to work six back post single crochet along the bottom edge of this eye. So we've done front post already this pattern, but we haven't done back post yet. In theory, they're basically the same. So we are going to be working around the stem of the stitch instead of through the loops. So because we're back posting this time, we're going to insert our hook from the back of the piece around the post, then back to the back of the piece, yarn over and pull up our loop, and then finish our single crochet as per usual. So that's our first one. And I'm gonna do five more around the underside of this eye. Just like that. So you'll note that's giving us a little bit of a ridge there that we like to see. We are going to put a single crochet into that, that sort of middle nose piece that we've been working on this whole time. That is just through both loops. And then we're going to work six back post single crochet around the underside of our second eye. Just like so. We're then gonna finish off this round with 11 single crochet back to our starting point. So there we are at the end of row 14. We have completely attached his eye sockets at this point. And what you can do is pinch around the white to indent them. And so we should still have 37 stitches in our round. That hasn't changed since row eight. And we're just gonna stop and take a little breather at this point to insert our eyes. So with your eyes, you can basically choose to make whatever expression you like. The eyes should only be inserted through the orange and the edge of them should not sit anywhere on your white. So if I inserted them here, for example, that is too close to the edge, it's going to overlap onto the sheet and destroy our little optical illusion. So you kind of have to wrangle the chains underneath as well, but pop in your eyes. And when you're happy with the expression that they form, snap your backs on. Now we're just going to continue on and build up the rest of the head and a big chunk of the body in this ghost costume. And we'll stop before we get to the end of it so that we, I can show you how to build these structural rows in. So as we do this, you'll note that we're placing a lot of decreases at the front and increases at the back. Now that is what's going to help us form that curved in chin and that flared out back to just really emphasize the illusion that there is a cat under there when you and I both know that we're just making the sheet and stuffing it and that's it. 
I would encourage you to keep using your stitch marker throughout this process and to check that your row count is correct at the end of each row. Okay, so there we are at the end of row 24. And now what we are going to do is lay the foundation to basically have one part of our stitching continue on and create a little ruffled ghost costume. And the other part, again, excuse the pins, to create this purple base. So we're going to leave our stitch marker where it currently is, which is through the first stitch from row 24. And we're going to work what I'm going to call row 25A. And that consists of 48 back post single crochet around the piece. So just work around your stitch marker as best as you can. Uh, if you do end up having to take it out to make your stitches work, make sure you put it straight back in in the exact same spot. It's kind of an important spot. But other than that, just work your way around the whole piece. So that's our 48 there. So one thing that you can notice at this point is it leaves us with basically two full sets of loops that we can work into. So we've got our stitch saver through one set of loops, which I'm going to call like our outer set. And then we have this second inner set that we've just created with those back post stitches. So what we're actually going to be doing is continuing along working in this inner set to build up the bulb of the cat. And then later we'll be rejoining where we've got our stitch marker here to work along those outer set to build up the frill of the ghost costume. So hopefully if that doesn't make sense to you now, it will shortly. <laughs> so what we're going to do is in that 48th back post single crochet, we are going to change to our cat color. So color changes work exactly the same way, even with back post stitching. So I've got my two loops on my hook. I'll hold that out of the way and I'm changing back to my orange. Golly, that purple really makes these colors pop nicely, doesn't it? Look at that, they're lovely. So paying careful attention to which set of loops you're using, we're going to work one row around now in our orange. That will be six repeats of three single crochet, a decrease, and then three single crochet. That should narrow your round down to 42 stitches in total. Just like so. Now at this point, I am going to trim off my white. We'll be using that to reattach later. And I'm going to knot these two ends together. So that is the tail where we joined our orange and this is the tail where we finished off our white. So I'm just going to, it's nothing fancy here. I'm gonna give it a little double knot and leave that tucked away inside. Okay, so in the, <laughs> and that's what we currently look like really cute like a little babushka doll but a cat so in the next row we are going to be attaching in our front legs so i've got them both here as a reminder we have stuffed them a little bit but we should still be able to squish the opening flat and we are going to start by working 23 single crochet around now over the next four rows we're going to be attaching all of the body pieces but if you'd rather just sew them on because it does make this a little bit easier just work them as 42 single crochet around each so just like so, so 23 stitches should bring you around to sort of the far side of the front. And over the next six stitches, we're going to attach our first paw. So what you should do, squish the opening of your paw flat so that the toe is entirely on one of the sides. Basically your finishing off point should be on one of the ends. And you're going to place this foot so that the foot pads are facing you or facing up the body. So that's the position that we're talking about, kicking its leg up like it's doing a little can-can. And we're going to crochet through both layers of the foot and the body. So we're going to insert our hook through the first pair of stitches on the leg into the next stitch of the body. So working through all three layers, pulling up a loop and working that single crochet. So it's the first one and we're going to do that five more times. So the pair of, pair of stitches from the leg and into the body two, three, four, five, and six. You are then going to work one single crochet just into the body. At this point you can kick the leg down too, just to make sure it's sitting roughly where you would want it to, which is pretty much directly below this eye. 
And we're going to do the same thing on the other side with the other leg. Squishing it flat, kicking it up, and stitching it on. Making sure that you get through all three layers. Like so. So there are his little kicky feet. So now we're just going to finish that row off by working six single crochet to get back to our starting point. We are now just going to work one row of 42 single crochet around. Like so. And in the next two rows, we're going to be attaching both the tail and the back legs. Okay, so make sure that you have your two back feet and your tail close by, ready to go. <laughs> so start by working seven single crochet. Then grab your tail. And squish it flat so that your finishing off point sits along one edge. You'll note that you get two layers of five single crochet. So you'll have a bottom layer and a top layer. You're going to line the five stitches of the bottom layer up with the next five stitches of the body. And you're going to insert your hook through just one layer of the tail and the la one layer of the body. And we're going to work five single crochet along through those two layers. like so. So you'll note that we can still see inside the tail there and it's kind of got hinged on one side. Basically in the next layer we'll join in the second layer of that, but for now I'll just leave that hanging. We are then going to work five single crochet around through just the body. And grab one of our feet. So our feet again have two layers to them. We have the top of our foot which has six stitches along and the bottom of our foot which has six stitches along. And what you're going to want to do is line it up so that the top of the foot is against the body and the six stitches of that top layer line up with the next six stitches of our body. And we're going to again insert our hook through just the top layer of the foot and one layer of the body and work six single crochet through those two layers. Like so. So once again, you can still see inside the foot, it's just kind of hinging there. We're then going to work 13 single crochet around the front, behind where we've attached those front feet already. We are then going to grab our second foot, and we're going to do the same thing that we did on the other side. So placing the top side of our foot against the body, work the next six stitches through one layer of the foot and one layer of the body. like so. And that should actually bring us perfectly up to where we finished that round. So all of your pieces are currently attached. She's looking a little bit silly. She's looking like she's in a little bit of a sit and scoot position actually. Scoot, 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 scoot. And in the next row as we work around we'll be attaching the second layer of the tail and each of the back feet to help pull them up and into position. So that's what we're going to do now. So it's basically a repeat of row 29 just with the second layer of each of the pieces we're attaching instead of the first layer. So that brings us back around to where our tail is. And this time we are going to be inserting our hook through one layer of the tail and one layer of the body. So that's across five stitches. Then we work five single crochet up to where our foot is. If you haven't already, we're going to tuck some stuffing into this foot. So I'm going to tuck about this much into each foot. And I'll do the other one while we're at it. And work six stitches through one layer of the foot and one layer of the body, just to finish attaching that. Then 13 single crochet back around to our other foot. Then 
and we're going to do the same thing again. <laughs> this is the last piece we really need to attach. So there's the second foot, which brings us back around to where the start of our row is. So at this point, we have attached all of our limbs. Our feet should be sitting nicely the way we want them to, and our tail should as well. And your front paws are still a little bit flippy, but there's a couple of solutions to that that you can deploy if you're not happy with that by the end of this particular you know, process. So I'm now going to work just three rows to narrow down the opening at the base of the cat. And then we'll come back and we'll do some specialty stuffing. So there we are. We've narrowed our opening down to 24 stitches. So now we're going to stop and do a, do a little <laughs> octocat. Octocat does whatever an octocat does. Um, we're going to stop and do a little bit of custom stuffing. So the real trick for this particular amigurumi is the stuffing of it. Just because you have some pieces you want to stay indented and others that you want to sort of curve outwards in very specific ways. So there are tricks you can do when stuffing that can just really help make your piece turn out a little bit better. So you'll note right now what I'm doing is tearing stuffing into sort of really small pieces. So like fit in the palm of your hand type pieces. And what I'm going to do is only stuff Spookity one little chunk at a time. So this chunk is going to go into one of his ears. Then I'll grab another chunk for the other ear. I'm then going to add one chunk to the top of his head to fill that out, but nothing below the eyes. And I'm basically just going to continue on like that, adding little bits of stuffing at a time to make sure that everything is sitting how I want it to. So you'll note that while I'm stuffing the face, I'm holding the eyes in and I'm pushing the stuffing up into the forehead and even into the space between the two eyes. It's because you want stuffing in those spaces, but you also want to make sure that there is enough of a cavity behind that the eyes sit inwards. Stuffing this way also helps to decrease bulges where you don't want them and... Basically, if you don't stuff right, your piece can end up really misshapen. You can't fix bad stuffing with stitching, but you can fix bad stitching with good stuffing. Let's put it that way. Mr. Knotts just said something highly inappropriate. It's, it's kind of like what I say about sewing as well. It's like, take your time and pin it properly. There's no real hurry to this. Just because you can shove all the stuffing you need to in there in the space of 20 seconds doesn't mean it's not worth taking a couple of minutes to make sure it's really filled out nicely. Okay. So when you are satisfied that your spookity has been adequately stuffed, we're going to carry on and work the remaining three rows to finish closing off the opening at the bottom. And finish off. Now I am just going to take our remaining tail and weave it through the front loops only of the six stitches we have left. And pull it tight to close like a reverse magic ring. Tuck that end away inside. Okay, so we are nearly done. Most of our pieces are attached now. So all we really have left to do is the frill around the bottom of his skirt. So it extends down a little bit, which will help hold these into position where we actually want them to sit. So we want to grab our white again, and I'm going to attach mine to my hook with my slip knot. And we're going to go back around to where our stitch marker is still attached and it was attached in the first stitch of row 24 which is perfect because what that's doing is indicating the pair of loops we want to use to reattach to finish off our ghost costume. So I'm going to be attaching using a standing single crochet but if you don't like to use those or you don't know how what you can do instead is slip stitch, chain one and then single crochet over the top through the same set of loops to get the same effect. So there is my joining stitch. I can now remove that stitch marker. <sighs> Freedom. So for the first row of this ghost frill, we're going to be working in those loops that the back post single crochet that we did left free. And it should make a full row for you the whole way around. So for that row, we are going to work six repeats of seven single crochet and then an increase to bring us up to 54 stitches in total. Now that first joining one we did counts as our first stitch. And you should also note that I'm working all of my stitches with the ears of Spookity facing towards me and the feet facing away. like so. So you can see we've got a little bit of that skirt starting to form now. Then we're going to work another row around to get up to 60 single crochet. And then from depending on your preference you can either add a couple of rows of 60 single crochet around to give you some length or you can skip straight to the final row which will give you the little ruffle around the edge. 
And on the one I'm doing today, I'm going to add two more rows of 60 single crochet around. And then go ahead and add our ruffle, which is 20 repeats of a single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, and then a single crochet. I just really want to thank everybody for humoring me on this particular project this week, just because Spookity was the first pattern, Spookity was the first pattern that I ever released on this channel, and so I feel a little bit sentimental about Spoo Kitty, uh, otherwise known as the ghost kitten, um, or the little cat in the ghost costume, depending. And when I first uploaded her pattern, I wasn't sure if I was going to be a pattern channel. And I had, I think it was like 60 or 70 subs. I was definitely below 100 because when I posted Spoo Kitty, I, I got boosted up and hit that 100 subscriber mark. And depending on when this video goes live, I should be closing in on 20k. So, uh, yeah, just, um, it's kind of, it's been really nice to sort of revisit one of my early, early designs. It was one of the first patterns I ever wrote. Uh, very first pattern video I ever did, which is why I've had to redo it, basically. But there is so much to love about this particular pattern. And I just, I think back and I remember how much doubt I had about about releasing this, about whether or not it would work, about whether or not people would like it, and just I don't know. Hindsight is such a such a such a wonderful thing to look back and remember how like how how much stress and doubt I was feeling, and then just to see what it all turned into two years later. <laughs> so a huge thank you to everybody who has been here, because I know that a lot of not a lot obviously not a lot of you, but so a big thank you to anyone who has been here, because I know that there is still some of you out there that was there for Spoo Kitty, and, or, or found me not long afterwards anyway, and you've just sort of, you've been here supporting me for the last two years, and I just want to say thank you, and I hope, and I hope you like this new version of Spoo Kitty. It's also just been really cool to sort of see kind of how far I've come in terms of how I design and how I go about constructing different things and making different shapes. Because uh, the way I made Spoo Kitty way back when was kind of the pinnacle of everything I knew how to do. I would really pushed myself to make sort of it look like it had layers on it and just like it was, I, that was, that was me pushing myself then. And this is me pushing myself now. So I'll have to come back in two more years and make another Spoo Kitty and see see what else I've learned along the way. So just like that you'll see how the skirt is holding his legs down against his body and there is Spoo Kitty. Now I'm just going to weave this end in and I'm going to do that just by sort of back and forth through the frill until we reach a point against the body and then I'll just tuck it away inside. That's where I lost the yarn chicken. <laughs> so there we go. So that is why I consider this pattern to be no so now. But we are just going to continue on and add a couple of nice little features. Okay, so we're going to take our needle and some of the white yarn. And first off, you'll note that there is this tiny little hole between the ears on top of the head. And that bothers me. So I'm just going to take a quick moment and stitch that shut. <laughs> when I revise her again in two years, I'll hopefully have worked out how to fix that. So just like that. And then I'm going to use this white to add these little white lines to the outer edges of the eyes. I think it just gives her a lot more life to her face. Now, while you're at it, you can also use the yarn to sort of pull these eye sockets back further in the head and lock them into place. To me, I consider that a little bit too, like it's pushing the, the limits of what I'm calling a no-so pattern to do something like that. But I think adding a few little details to the eyes is still sort of within reasonable bounds. There we go. <laughs> now, at the same time, if these legs are bothering you because, I mean, they can still pop up, what you can do is grab a little of your orange and just tack them down against the body where you want them to sit. And uh, just in case I'm misusing that term or you don't know what that term is, that just means one long stitch. It's not really sewing, it's just one long stitch through the paw, into the body, and then 
through the pour again because no need to reinvent the wheel here. And tuck all of your ends in. So there is your finished Spoo Kitty 2.0. That's her compared to the 2020 version. It's from the sides, a little bit of a comparison. She turned out a little bit bigger, but that was also to do with yarn choices. I made the original in a very soft cotton, which is still a very soft cotton. But since then, I've realized that I prefer acrylic 100% of the time, basically. Uh, that did naturally make her turn out a little bit bigger. But other than that, I think she's a pretty good match but without the mathematical errors, and now she's no-so. So I think that's just an overall improvement, don't you? <laughs> so there are your finished spooks. I think it's just really interesting to look at kind of the difference two years have made technique-wise, just and, and just the difference in how I write my patterns, approach my, my structures and my forms, and just the things that I'm willing to, to force myself to explain on camera. I feel like I've gotten a lot more confident in raining the pain down a little bit but this has been just a really good exercise for me and i hope that anybody who enjoyed spoo kitty back when she was released is enjoying the new version and i hope that i've managed to introduce a bunch of you to the new version today as well so spooks so spoo kitty 2.0 of course just kicks off the halloween patterns that we have planned this year i have two more that are completed at this point and just need to be filmed and i am looking at them right now and they are <laughs> I like them, <laughs> but one of them at least might be a little high concept. Anyway, you'll, you'll see why I'm laughing when you see those. But other than that, I'm going to see you all next week. Okay, bye.